Happy holidays, Rod here at A Better Way to Farm, where we help increase yields and improve profits. Thank you for tuning in for day four. Today, we're going to talk about, start in on the secondary nutrients, which is calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. And in many ways, as we go through here, we're going to see the calcium is probably actually the biggest nutrient and uh, as far as what it does and how it impacts everything else. So we'll start looking at our uh, roles here of the essential nutrients. And they say that it is utilized for continuous cell division and formation. It's involved in nitrogen metabolism. It reduces plant respiration. It aids in the translocation of photosynthesis from the leaves into the fruiting organs. It increases fruit set. It is essential for nut development in peanuts, and it stimulates microbial activity. And I put a big star by that. Proper calcium makes all of those things in the soil work better. All of the bugs there work better when we have that. And so it's important to get that down and get it right. I also want to go back <clears throat> and talk about, we're going to hit this two or three times today, but it's utilized for continuous cell division and formation. Guys, calcium should be the cell wall. Now, if we overuse nitrogen, the nitrogen will become that item and it will push the calcium out. We know that, we've talked about that already. However, cell wall structure, cell wall strength comes from calcium. And so we wanna make sure that we have enough calcium there. Grabbing into the Midwest Labs book, going to page 48, and we'll see what they have to say here about calcium. The nutrient plays an important role in the fertility of soils. Some plants, such as alfalfa, clovers, and certain leafy vegetables require large amounts of calcium. Plants of these types thrive best when the predominant base is in the, in the soil is calcium. If other bases, such as magnesium, potassium, or sodium, are in presence of equal amounts or higher than calcium, there are disturbances that can occur. It has many functions. It's developed, it is associated with the development of protein. It assists in root development. It assists in the movement of carbohydrates within the plant. And it is needed for cell walls, seed production, and other processes. If the plant is low in calcium, it will be adversely affected in growth. As we take a look at this calcium thing, and some, one of the problems that we run across is that oftentimes we confuse pH and, and calcium. We're going to get into that here a little bit and talk about why that's not always the right indicator to, to take a look at. Out of our Western Fertilizer Handbook, calcium. It is considered essential to healthy cell well, walls and to aid in the development of root structure. That just keeps coming up from all these guys who have studied this. Symptoms of a calcium-starved plant would include the growing point dies under severe deficiencies, margins of affected leaves, usually the younger ones, have a scalloped appearance, the foliage is not so affected as is usually abnormally dark green, too much calcium can make our plant dark green, or excuse me, not enough calcium can make our plant dark green. There is a tendency for the plant to shed its blossoms and its buds prematurely. If we're short on calcium, we're going to lose those blooms, guys. It's just the way it works. And stem structure in the absence of calcium is weakened because it doesn't have the strength for the cell walls. And so we just keep coming back to what it does and how important it is. Dr. Anderson calls calcium nature's detoxifier because it takes out a lot of different things that are in the plant that shouldn't be there. And that's why it's so important to have it. He says, he's talking about this idea of pH versus having checking the calcium on the soil test. And he says that the reason that calcium is overlooked centers on the lack of knowledge about pH. It is taught that the soil pH relates directly to the need for limine, which is the term given for the application of dry calcium. People with important sounding titles, degrees, persuade farmers who do not know the technical jargon that the calcium requirements of a soil are determined by its pH. Now guys, that's not true. The pH is important and we're gonna use calcium to correct that. However, we are not going to let that be the only reason that we look at as to why it is we need to put calcium on. He goes on to say, at the lower 
calcium levels, which we have in America today, greater amounts of acid fertilizers must be achieved to get a given volume. The catch is that that volume achieved via this practice is not synonymous with quality as is improved by the current use of chemicals for insect and disease control. And what he's saying is the more acidic we get, the less calcium we have, the more fertilizer we have to put on, and the more fertilizer we put on, the more acidic we get, so then we need more fertilizer. It's kind of a pretty good scam for the people who are doing it, but uh, guys, this is important. I would encourage you to get some books and get to reading on calcium and see how it can impact the rest of your fertility um, program. Again, we know that if we have too much in in the plant, too much nitrogen, it will replace the calcium in the cell membrane, and then we end up with a very unhealthy plant. One of the things that we want to talk about is uh, taking a look at what kind of calcium do we need to put on. Do we need to use dolomite lime or do we need to use calcitic lime? Dolomite lime would be high in magnesium higher in magnesium. Calcitic would be very low in magnesium. And there's a place for both of them. Where we live in Southeast Iowa, we have really high mag levels in our soil, high enough that it's problematic. And so what do we need to do? We need to get calcitic lime. Now I see other people who have low mag levels and they need to find dolomatic lime. And here's the problem. Because we already have high mag here, guess what all of the quarries near us have? You think they've got high calcium lime or high mag lime? Right, it's all high mag lime. So if I use local lime, I'm making my problem worse. And I'm gonna talk about how that can change the pH and we can really kid ourselves. You know, I've often said if there was an 11th commandment, it might be such as thou shalt not kid thyself. And when we're changing that pH, but we're not doing it properly, we're not fixing our calcium problem. And so here we need calcitic lime, low mag, high calcium. Other places will need high mag, lower calcium. And it probably is going to amount to this. You're going to have to truck at 40, 50, 100 miles in order to get what you need. And some people say, well, you know, then that, that's, that's a lot more expensive. Are we putting calcium on to meet the calcium need? Or are we putting calcium on to save money? Because if we're just putting it on to save money, we're probably not getting near the bang for the buck that we should have. In hands-on agronomy, he's got a section called The Secret Life of pH Management. And I'm not gonna read all of it to you, but some of this is really important. Magnesium, pound for pound, can raise the pH up to 1.67 times as high as calcium. So putting on magnesium, will raise your pH. And a soil high in magnesium and low in calcium can test 6.5, but it will be completely inadequate for growth. pH, guys, is not the only indicator. An imbalanced equilibrium of calcium and magnesium permits organic residues to decay into alcohol, and that will be a sterilant to the bacteria, and then into formaldehyde, which is a preservative of cell tissue. The symptoms of improper decay system can be observed when previous year stocks are plowed back up just as shiny and fresh as they were when they were turned down. Under these circumstances, larger and increasing amounts of nitrogen and fertilizer minerals will be required just to maintain the normal crop yields. And remember, large applications of nitrogen consume larger amounts of calcium as well as burn up crop residues and humus. You can get an increased yield for a few years from this stored up wealth of humus, but eventually you're going to have to account for the withdrawal. Guys, calcium is really important and pH is not the only indicator. I want to stress that because putting on high mag lime will actually raise your pH faster, but that does not mean that it's going to be what you need. We want to make sure we're raising that pH and we're doing it in a way that's bringing in the minerals that we need. If we need calcium, we want to get calcium. If we need magnesium, we need to bring that in. And so that's really important. And one of the things in several of these books, and I'm not going to dig through and find this on all of them, but one of the things that's really important is to understand when we're applying lime, the size of the grind is really important. Because the more fine that grind is, the quicker it will affect the soil and the better off we will be. If we're getting something that doesn't go through a 100 mesh screen, we're probably in 
you know, in some trouble here as far as getting a very quick result. You know, we can spread road rock out there and eventually change our calcium. However, it's going to take a really long time to do that. So we're looking for that finer grind. What mesh screen does it go through? Because that is really super important in order to get that done. As we look at um, this calcium product, I'm going to grab Anderson's book here. And as he gets to talking about the, he talks about a magnesium deficiency, which we're going to get into here soon, but it won't be today. Um, but here's a few things you might want to look at. These are symptoms of calcium deficiencies and in, in corn specifically. I'm not going to do the others, but in corn. What are the symptoms? Corn smut, corn yellow leaf, leaf blight, northern corn leaf blight, kernel red streak, diplodia, and anthracnose. Guys, most of these are caused by a fungus. And that fungus is attracted to a plant that's low in calcium. So if you're looking for plant health, calcium is one of those things that we want to make sure that we have in the proper amount. We can have too much. We'll get into that when we do magnesium, but we want to make sure that we have it. Just a little funny that I thought on the side here that he wrote, if you're fighting dandelions in your yard, and they're a very common weed, they are a red light signal of the following sequential nutrient deficiencies. Dandelions indicate a deficiency in calcium, phosphate, vitamin A, and iron. If you correct these deficiencies, your dandelions will disappear. Just a little tip there with no, uh, no extra charge for that, guys. When we're looking at calcium, one of the things we want to do is look at the base saturation on the soil test. And guys, there are no absolutes, okay? People, they want to come up and they want to work on this and that and have all these things. We got to do just this. And I see companies out here and they say, if you get your base saturation rate of calcium to 85%, everything will be fine. And I don't agree with that. Uh, I've had too many growers come to me who tried that and it didn't work. And so as we start reading through these books, it would appear that about 68 to 70 is where we want to be. If we can get a 68% base saturation rate, then we're right on target. But that being said, I want to remind you that the world record yield for dry land production, 442 bushels to the acre, was done by Francis Childs 20 years ago. It was documented by the NCGA, and that's going to be important before someone starts talking about some other things that are out here. It was documented by the NCGA, and guys, to do that, you've got to have three different tests with three different sets of judges to make sure that you're getting it right. And so... What he had there was he had a base saturation rate of only 50% calcium, but he had an organic matter of 6.8%, and he had a lot of other things going for him that were really fantastic that he had done correctly and made sure that they worked. And that's what we have to do if we're going to do off, off target, so to speak. But ideally, what we're looking for is that 68%. And here's something that we have to remember. If that base saturation gets too high, it will tie up magnesium and it will tie up potassium. If it gets too low, we run the risk of potassium and magnesium overwhelming in the plant and it not working out the way that we want it to go. Neil Kinsey, writing here, says, Calcium and magnesium go hand in hand. Magnesium is a constituent of chlorophyll. In fact, chlorophyll and photosynthesis rely on its presence and availability. Magnesium aids in phosphate metabolism. Magnesium in conjunction with calcium is the key to air and water in the soil. Magnesium helps hold the soil together and tightens it up. Too much of this will make, the, make it harden when the soil gets dry. And so it's all about having it in the right ratios, doing the right things. You know, again, on my desk pad, what's it say? It's never wrong to do the right thing. Calcium and magnesium are considered elements of secondary importance in the industry and the market of commercial fertilizers. But the truth is that for the soil and for the plants, calcium and magnesium are primary in importance, both quantitatively and also for their biochemical significance. And a deeper look 
into every living body, including the human being, discovers the fact that nothing can live without calcium and magnesium. And it, by the way, it needs to be in the right ratios and it needs to be readily available. I love these guys and what they've spent their whole life studying on this. It's just astounding to me to see the way that they have worked and studied and to figure these things out. And they've ran test after test after test out in the field. And then they're kind enough to share that with us if we're willing to do the work and do the digging. Guys, if you're looking for a ratio, and I'm not saying you're always going to be able to do this, your ratio, ideally of mag to calcium would be one part magnesium to four parts calcium. Now, again, you can't always correct that. It's not always a cost effective, but what we have to do is be mindful of it and be headed in the right direction. And if you don't take anything else out of today, I want you to take two things. Number one, I want you to take that calcium is super important. And I want to encourage you to go and start reading and do research on it and understand the difference between calcium content and pH and then to figure out how magnesium and calcium play into that. And number two, I want you to make sure that you're using the right liming material when you do that. I want to encourage you that it's worth the money to buy the lime from somewhere else and truck it in. I want to close here or get close to closing out of the nature and properties of soils with just a short thing. Calcium is a macronutrient essential to all plants. The ability of the soil to supply this element is intimately tied to soil acidity because the non-acid cation helps buffer the soil pH and reduces aluminum saturation. The physiological role. It is a major component of cell walls. Pectates, Calcium pectates give the wall much of its stiffness. It is intimately involved with cell elongation and division. If we want those cells to divide and grow right, we need it. Though its role in maintaining the integrity of the cell wall membranes is critical for protecting the cell against the toxicity of other elements. Remember that one of the guys said it is nature's detoxifier. No different than when someone else gets poisoned, they need detox. Then this is what this will do also. It will detox the plant. In contrast to most nutrients, it is taken up almost exclusively by young root chips whose endermis, endodermis cells have not matured to the point of becoming imper impermeable. Redistribution of calcium within the plant occurs mainly with the transpiration water in the xylem rather than in the phloem. These two facts account for the restricted movement of calcium to growing tissues that are not drawing water by transpiration. And again, we're going to come back to the deficiencies. It's quite rare. Most plants, except in very acid soils or high mag soils, when calcium deficiency does occur, it's typically associated with growing points such as buds, unfolding leaves, and fruits and root tips. Guys, I don't know if you've ever seen a corn plant. We used to call them a whip when we were working in the seed corn industry where they wouldn't unfurl. It was just all the leaves stayed tied up. That was a calcium deficiency. Under calcium deficiency, the root system is often shorter and denser than normal. When calcium is deficient, normally harmless levels of other metals can become toxic to the plant. This would include things like magnesium, zinc, and manganese. But it also includes some of your very important non-nutritious metals such as aluminum and cadmium. And I'm probably somewhere in the middle of this. I'm going to try to talk about cadmium and fit it in. I'm not sure where I'll do that at. We want to talk about cadmium and why it's so bad in your fertilizer. But we just got to know that a lot of our soils do have a lot of aluminum. And calcium helps us from getting an aluminum toxicity. Guys, thank you for tuning in today. We sincerely appreciate it. I hope that you're getting value out of this. If you are, please share these with a friend. And, you, of course, you can go over and listen to the podcast platform at A Better Way to Farm. You can find us on TikTok. You can find us on um, Facebook. You can go to the website, abetterwaytofarm.com, and check that out and see what you can find there in the profit calculator to help you make some decisions for 2023. We look forward to coming back soon with Day 5. Still rocking a different Christmas sweater. Most of these are gifts. I really appreciate people doing that. I'm still wanting to see your Christmas sweater. Let's see them. 
Hey guys, Merry Christmas. I hope you're really having a better day.